So in a previous video I did about my scheduling, I mentioned how I do everything in regular old plain text files and it didn't even click with me that I'm using VimWiki to do all of my note taking, so why don't I use VimWiki to do my diary as well? And someone in the comment section mentioned that in VimWiki there's a thing called VimWiki Diary, so why don't I just use that? I went and explored it, and you know what? It's actually really, really useful. So this is an empty Vim buffer here. I'll get into my VimWiki Diary in just a bit, but one thing you need to know is that this isn't, say, like an extra add-on or an extra plugin or anything like that. So everything that I mentioned in my previous videos about VimWiki will apply here because this is just functionality built directly into VimWiki. It's not the most complex diary system, but it's basic and it's really all you need. So you probably know that you can get into your VimWiki index by just doing VimWiki index. Now to get into your VimWiki diary index, it's pretty similar. All you have to do is VimWiki diary. Make sure you spell it as diary, not dairy, like I just did there, index. And there we go. Now when you first open this, it's actually going to be a blank file. I'll show you how to make it so all your dates in here get automatically generated, but when you first open it, it will be empty. So the other way you can get here, because in VimWiki fashion, all of the commands are really long. You probably don't want to be writing out Vim Wiki Diary and then spell it wrong every single time. Index. That's way too long. What you're probably going to want to do is know the shortcut for it. So if you do leader wi, that will jump you directly to this file right here. So make sure you remember that because it will make your life a little bit easier. Now, the first thing you're probably going to want to do once you get here is actually make your first diary note. So if you do Vim Wiki make diary note. I'm not going to write these out for the rest of the video because they're all going to be really long. That will actually go and make a diary note for today. So if I go and press enter now, as you can see, it's made a new file called 2020-08-17. So that's for today's date. Now the other way to do this is let's go back to the actual index file and press leader w leader w. And that will take us into the same file. Now, if this file already exists, when you go and run that command, it's not going to go and regenerate the file or anything like that. All it's going to do is just take you directly to the note file for today. Everything that applies to a regular VimWiki file will apply here. So we can say, go and make a heading. We can make another heading and put it at like a second level. We can make an unordered list, put some items in here. We can, you know, make a different sort of unordered list. We can have check boxes in here. All of the normal sort of stuff that you can do in VimWiki can be done in here. You can do links as well. Basically, it nothing changes here. So this is just a regular sort of VimWiki file. It's just named in a different way and I guess is structured in a way that will let you automatically generate your index file. But aside from that, nothing actually changes for the way that you actually go and write this file. So if you're used to working with VimWiki, there is basically nothing you have to learn except for a couple of new key bindings. Let's say that we're done with this and we want to go back to our index file. So obviously we can press leader wi and that's going to jump us there as well. But we can also just press backspace and like with the regular sort of Vim wiki, that's just going to take you to the basically the last file that you're in. So as you can see here, it has actually generated some stuff for us. But if we want to go and manually generate stuff, what we can do is press leader w leader i. Now, nothing really changed there, but let's go and delete some stuff just so you can see some difference actually happening. So, leader W, leader I, and what that's going to do is break all of your notes files down into years and months and then just group them together wherever they need to be. Now, one thing I didn't realize before recording this video is if you put a level one heading in any of your notes documents, it's going to change the display name of that actual link. So, if we want to change that, all we have to do is just get rid of these two headings and basically, if we regenerate this now, as you can see, that now shows the date. So personally, I prefer just seeing the date there when it's for a schedule. But if you want to have a different name there, then go set a heading in the file and that will then show a different display name. So if you're planning to run the generate links command, I would recommend never actually modifying the index file directly because it's probably going to be modified every single time you run that command. So I think even things that you add in yourself are going to be deleted, so just don't touch the index file if you're going to be running generate links. And I would recommend running it just because it's going to make the schedule much, much easier to handle. So the full command for that was vimwiki diary generate links. 
with VimWiki being capitalized with only the first word and then every other word being capitalized. Now, the command names are only going to get worse from here. So the next one is VimWiki make yesterday diary note. Basically, what that's going to do is the same one as make diary note, but it's going to do it for yesterday. So if we run the shortcut for that, which is leader W, leader Y, that's going to then actually go and open that up. So as you can see, it opens up a note for the 16th. And as of the recording of this video, that would be yesterday. So let's go and add some stuff in here. Let's add just some stuff in a list and then go back to our index. So if we go and regenerate this now, so leader W, leader I, as you can see, that is now being included in there. And we can also make a note for tomorrow by doing VimWiki make tomorrow diary note or the shortened down version, which is leader W, leader M. Now, the reason why it's on leader M instead of leader T is because leader T is dedicated to making a new tab. I don't really ever see a point to working with tabs, but if you want to make a new tab, it would be leader W, leader T. So obviously the tomorrow note had to be put on something different. So this one obviously is going to be made for the 18th. Let's just add some junk in here and let's go and then quit out of this and regenerate the link. So leader W, leader I. And as you can see, we now have a note in there for tomorrow. And another useful thing is being able to cycle through your diary notes. So if you do VimWiki diary prev day and VimWiki diary next day, that's basically going to take you to the previous day of notes or the next day of notes. Now, the bindings for these, I feel like are backwards. So control up is going to run VimWiki diary prev day, but control down is going to go to the next day. Now, you might like that binding, but I feel like that it probably should be the other way around. And after this video ends, I am going to flip it over because generally I prefer anything that's going backwards in time to be on down, but you might not agree with me. You might actually like the default bindings. So like with regular VimWiki files, you actually can go and link to them outside of the diary, but it can be a little bit annoying to work with. So let's go back to my index and let's say that we wanted to link to this file right here. So as you can see, it's located in... VimWiki, actually can't even see it really. It's located in VimWiki slash diary slash whatever the name of the file is. So if we went and actually wrote a link to that, so it, we just do diary slash 2020-08-17. This will take us to the file, or at least it'll take us to the file right now. As you can see, the file is already open. So let's open in read-only mode. As you can see, it has taken us to that actual file. But what happens if we change where our diary is located? Because we actually can go and configure that. It doesn't have to be just located in the diary folder. It could be in diary slash notes slash something slash something. So to account for this in VimWiki, there's a reference to where your diary folder is actually located. And the way that we do that is instead of doing this slash here, what we do is we do a colon. So diary colon and then some diary file will always refer to wherever your diary folder is located and then link to that file. So you could move your diary anywhere and this will still work. Obviously, you still need to have it properly configured inside of VimWiki, but assuming that you have that set up, this will always link back to your diary. So let's change this over to, I don't know, 16, and we try to jump to this one now. As you can see, that jumped us to the note from the 16th. Another cool thing this is supposed to have is integration with calendar.vim. Now, I haven't actually got this to work properly. So if we just run the calendar command, obviously you need to have the calendar installed. What you're supposed to be able to do is select one of these days and then just press enter on it. And then it will open up a VimWiki note file for that day. Now, as you can see, nothing seems to be happening. So I could be running the wrong calendar. I could be running the wrong version. I don't know exactly what the problem is here because there's like three or four different Vim calendars. And I grabbed the one called calendar.vim, but it could be the wrong one. So if someone has this working and they have a link to the one that actually does work, feel free to share it because this would actually be a really cool feature to have. Another cool feature is auto generating your diary index. So having to run uh, leader W, leader I, every time you come into this file, isn't really that productive. You probably just want to have this regenerate every single time the file actually gets open. So what you can do with that is if we go into your Vim config or into your Neo Vim config, what you're going to do is add in this line right here. So let g colon vimwiki underscore list equal and then pass in this value into the list. So auto underscore diary underscore index 
and then set that to one. Basically, what this is gonna do is every single time the diary index gets reloaded, it's just going to regenerate all of the links. So you don't have to ever worry about just regenerating them yourself. This just makes it much, much easier to actually handle. And the last thing you might wanna do, especially if you're from a country that isn't primarily English speaking, is localize your month name. So I'm not gonna write this out because I don't have most of these keys on my keyboard, but if we go and set vimwiki underscore diary underscore months, and then we go and fill out, so for month one, we wanna have this, month two, we wanna have this, this will actually go and localize the months into Russian, but you could do it for Mandarin, you could do it for Polish, you could do it for Japanese, whatever it is you wanna do, Basically, all you'd have to do is assign a value for each of the month names into whatever language you want to set it for. And I guess that's just going to make it a little bit easier if English isn't your primary language. So there are other bits of configuration I can talk about, like changing the sorting of the days or changing your key bindings. But all of that stuff is pretty well documented inside of the VimWiki documentation. So I would recommend checking that out first. But if there's anything you're unsure about feel free to leave a comment down below and either I or someone else will probably be able to answer the question pretty quickly. So I'm going to keep using this because I already had VimWiki installed to do all of my notes. So basically all that changes now is instead of doing my scheduling in just a random file, I just do it from my VimWiki diary index. That's literally all that changes. So for me, it's basically just going to integrate perfectly into my workflow. So I'm going to keep using it. I think that is pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, all of that stuff. And if you want to go watch my rambly stuff, then I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. It's just three hours of just nonsense. So go check that out. It's available on Library, YouTube, and the audio version is available wherever you can watch audio podcasts. This channel is also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute as well. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the bell down below as well. So I think that is pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.